everybody. Well, we're here again and we're about to do another live and just wait for a couple of people to join in because I've told everyone on Instagram, I'll be going live on Facebook and all of the things. So today um, I'm going live again this week, every day for five, no, seven days and uh, just challenging myself to do more Facebook lives because um, as part of my business, that's quite helpful to me and to you, hopefully, the helpful information. Um, today we're going to be creating this antique basket look. So just taking an ordinary cane basket, I don't know if you can see the picture there, using Jamie Lundstrom's French Vintage Decor book. And I'm going to pop the link, I've got an affiliate link for that. If you, you'll find it on Amazon, I'll just pop the link right here in the comments so you can see that. Uh, we're going to be using Fusion Mineral Paint to do ours. Now in Jamie's book she has a few different craft brands from the acrylic paints from the craft shop. You can use those. It's just the colourings that she's really talking about. So uh, let me just try and see if all the lives working over here on my page before we get started. So talk amongst yourselves. Let me know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to hear from you. Just got to find my live. Here we go. And I'm just going to pop the link for the book just right up there in the comments so you can see that. You can click on the link, go and find it for yourself. But it's really a gorgeous, gorgeous book. It's probably all backwards to you right there. But in the um, contents, there's just so many different projects that you can create for the home. Decor, it's got furniture painting tips, all sorts of gorgeous how to do a French gold mirror, for example. Uh, plaster, wall art, so many different projects. And a lot of them are using some of the, if you're a furniture painter, probably using furniture paints that you already have at home. Fusion mineral paint, framed Eiffel Tower poster. Look at this, rusted frames. So you can see there's so many gorgeous. Hi Joe, lovely to see you. And so we'll be doing this French looking antique basket today. Now I've done a, a different kind of technique before using on cane baskets because they're quite easy to just pick up at a thrift store or op shop we call them here in Australia. You can't hear me so Joe can't hear me just making sure that anyone else who's on can you just tell me if you can't hear because I've got my microphone plugged in and that should be all working. Just make sure that on your end you haven't muted. Uh, let me just see if I can test that on mine. my computer here. Yeah, I can hear it on my computer, Joe. So just check your settings to make sure that they're all working. Dotty can't hear. That's unusual because I'm playing it on my computer and it's loud and clear. So not sure what's working or what's not. I'm just going to unclip the microphone. Just tell me, can you hear now? Now I'm going to click it back in. You can hear that. Okay, can you hear now? Oh, you said you can hear. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so everyone else can hear just fine. <laughs> My mistake. I'm reading the comments all wrong. All right, so let me just mute myself over here so I don't have to listen to myself on the computer at the same time. But it's good to be able to see what's happening over there because, you know, comments can sometimes disappear. Oh, no, Joe, you're flood, flood bound. Oh no, you must be up in North Queensland maybe. So let me know where you're coming from, where you're looking at, looking from today, whether you're in the USA, Canada. Um, we get people from all over the world jumping in on the live and it's so much fun, but we're making, if you've just joined us, this antique basket. So let's get started because I've got my basket here. I'll just flip you guys around so you can see that. Here's my cane basket. Now I have done some sides because you know when you're watching a live you don't want to be watching paint dry so I've done some of the sides but I just want to get started and show you how I started and then we'll turn it around so that while this side's drying I can get on to some of the other sides. So again here's the project that we're looking for this grey wash kind of a look and Jamie's got some techniques that she's shared with us in her book. The link's at the top of the comments there. And for the starters, we're going to use some brown paint. So I'm just using Fusion's chocolate. It's just straight chocolate brown, as the name suggests. Don't want to get paint all over the book. So we just are going to be dipping our brush in. Now, when you're painting, I just use the ends of your brush. You can see that I do have some up in the 
up near the ferrule, this is called. There is some up there, but you just want to dip your paint just in the ends of the brush. Wipe it off on the edge because you don't want too much. And we're just going to be brushing brown, and that's going to be our starting layer all over the basket. Hoping you can see that all right there. And if you have any questions, just even about painting cane, painting furniture, sometimes you'll find that cane, even though um, it's sort of a woody, woody product, it can have, or maybe they put on it if you get some of these cane baskets from your charity shop um, or even in the store, they put a varnish on it as well. So you want to get a good furniture paint like fusion that's going to stick to it or some chalk paints that's going to stick pretty well to it because it's a bit hard to sand cane. So you can see that right now it's even making a huge difference we're painting all that brown. You can get smaller thin brushes to actually get right in the crevices because you'll notice with cane that you can still see and you kind of get to get that action and maybe use a brush that you're not too worried about wrecking too much. I'm actually using my Klingon F30 flat. F is for flat, flat 30 today. Oops, I've got to get my camera in a better position guys. I'm sorry about that. So yeah, Joe, you're in Townsville. It's shocking up there at the moment. I sure hope that you are not flooded or your house and that you're okay and you haven't had to evacuate. Lots of people evacuating up there in North Queensland currently. Okay, so fairly easy and straightforward just to paint that completely brown. Wow, you just get a whole new look from that, don't you? You can see I'm going to get this all over my hands today, painting around the edges. Now you can see that I've painted a bit of the bottom so that while this top bit, we don't have time for all that to dry, we'll be able to look at the bottom section. So I'll leave that there so we can see the difference when we're finished and finish with that brown. Now, in the book that I'm looking at, and you can see the link again to that at the top of the page, our next step is to mix a small amount of the brown and beige paint together. So you're gonna need, uh, these are the colors I'm using today. I've got Fusion's Chocolate, which is a brown. We'll also be using a beige color, and that's what I'm going to be mixing in with it now. And I've used Algonquin, which is a lovely beige color. We'll also be using, and what Jamie says in the book, is to use a grey-black, so a grey-black paint. I'm going to actually mix coal black and ash to create a grey-black. So that's what I'll be doing today. The other thing that we will be using is some white wax. So I'm going to use Miss Mustard Seeds white wax for the finish. All right, so turning that over, you can see I've painted the inside and the outside brown. I've already painted this section brown up here. So I'll be working on this section for you now. Let me just turn that so you can see it. Right here. See, this is what we're going to be doing. And this is how we create the next layer. So the next layer, we will be using a mixture of the beige paint, which I've already mixed up a little bit here for you so that we don't have to... It's actually got some water in it. So we use the beige paint with a little bit of brown and a little bit of water and with quantities it's just a one-to-one -one ratio if you've got brown and equal amounts of the brown and beige paint so i've used chocolate and algonquin a little bit of each of those and then add one-to-one -one ratio of water so i've got that there and i'm just going to use oops i've just splashed it all over the basket just going to use the brown brush, give it a quick rinse off so it's not got too much brown on it. Shaking that off on my newspaper, which is probably shaking the table with. So it's got a little bit of added water from the brush being watered down just now. And just dipping it into my mixture here. Don't forget, you can always watch the replay. Wow, I've really got a get that most of that moisture off the brush. So then we're going to dry brush that diluted color back and forth in different directions all over the basket going back to dip the brush into the paint 
and wiping the excess off onto a paper towel numerous times. So this is me wiping it off onto newspaper. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit hard. Um, it's really quite wet and so I've wet a little bit too much of the basket on the top there. Because I don't want to cover up the brown, I'm just dry brushing this on here. So maybe I'll just use a paper towel to get that off or even my black towel. Sorry, I'm banging you and you're jumping up and down on my video right there. Okay, so just dry brushing that over the top of the brown sections that we've done there. So it'll have brown at the bottom layer, then a brownie beige look to dry brush on top of that. The next layer we're going to do will be on top of this section here which has been dried. This is the part I've just done. Again, this is what our basket looked like at the beginning. We've uh, used chocolate. I've splashed a bunch of paint under here. We are going well today. All right, and the next step is, so we've done the chocolate layer, we've done dry brushed, a mixture of the brown and beige paint mixed with a little bit of water. So you've watered down the paint like a wash and you've just dry brushed that over the top of the brown this is my brown down here, but we are just going in stages because we need each stage to dry. So this next dry section, we're going to squeeze some grey, black and beige paint onto a paper plate and mix it together, but not completely. So to make the black grey paint, I'm actually going to be using Fusions Ash and some coal black. Let me just make sure that we are in view here and that you can see my mixing. I'm just going to be dipping the tiniest, dripping the tiniest bit. Now I'm just eyeballing this. You can be a bit more accurate in your measurements. But all I want is a grey black paint. And instead of going out and buying something that's grey black, I'm just mixing a dark grey ash and the coal black. Whoa, a little tiny dribble there, a bit too much. That's our grey black. And then we want to mix a bit of beige paint. Probably a bit more black than grey right here. But we want to mix some beige into that. And in the book, Jamie Lundstrom's book, I'm going to get a new brush. Here we go. She says to mix it together, but not completely. So can you see the lovely color mixing there? It's kind of mixed together now, but you can see there's still a little bit of streaking going on in there. I'm gonna squeeze that out onto the plate. And she says to dry brush that everywhere on the basket. And so, of course, we're not going everywhere on the basket because we're working in sections. To dry brush, I really need to get a lot of this off the brush. So I'm just wiping it onto the edge of my paper plate until it's practically dry. Then we're coming over to our section here that we were working on. This is almost dry here, you know, this part that I just did earlier. So this is the section with two layers. And this is the third layer. So we're just going to dry brush. Dry brushing is just really dragging your brush over the surface and I'm not sure if you can see the difference there. Here's the two layers. Now this is our third layer going on. There's just that added bit of greyish going on. Just a touch. You can see how that's going to be antiquing this already. And if you want more you can add more. I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole lot of this basket here with this dry brushing. I'm going in the direction of the cane, but you could even just dry brush across the top edges here like this. Uh, just to your personal preference. So how's that? That's the, so what have we got? One, two, three layers on there now. And a lot of it dr includes or requires just a dry brushing technique. Again, dry brushing is dipping your, just your tips in, dr drying off or wiping off as much of the excess as you can on the paper towel, paper newspaper or a paper plate. 
and then just dragging your brush over the surface until you see just highlights because you do want to see those layers peeking through of all the different colours. Okay, so that is our third layer, the very final layer on our antiquing the basket look is using white wax. So what I've done on here is I've created, I've got that, the layers are all happening, we've got the three layers on here now. So this one's all dry, this one I've just dry brushed, so we're going to let that to dry. This is why during Facebook Lives I have parts done here, parts done there, so I've got to remember kind of where everything is so that I can get it, you know, you're not sitting there waiting, let's just wait for the paint to dry. Um, we can get on with the project. So this is the section here where I've done all three layers and it's ready it's for its final layer, which is the white wax. If you um, are liking the video, please feel free to share it in your groups or in your, on your page or on your personal profile. Or you can share it to friends, you know. You can hit the share button and share it in a message to a friend who you might think would really enjoy the project. They want to, you want to do it with a friend. You can create a watch party and do it together. Facebook's got all sorts of amazing things now. Okay, I've just got a lint-free rag cloth. It has been used for something else, but I'm using the clean side. And we're just going to dip it in some of Miss Mustard Seed's white wax. Uh, I love this wax. It's very easy to apply and you don't need a lot. So as you can see, I'm just going to wipe that off on the edges. And Jamie says in her book, dab a corner of the cloth into the white wax, dab a bit of wax onto the basket and rub it off with the same cloth continue to rub on and off until you get the desired look. So we're just going to go like so. Now you can see it looks a little bit, may look a little bit too much to start with, but we're putting it on and then you wipe it off. How many of you think you could find a basket in your local op shop or charity store, thrift store? and do this simple easy project at home. You can see it's going to turn out lovely. Okay, so I'm now going back over and with the same cloth, just rubbing that wax in to sections. You can see it's got really a lovely kind of grey wash about it now really looking like the vintage. So you can see the difference between this where I've got now the wax layer on top and this is a little bit darker. Let me try and move the camera instead of that so I can zoom it in a little. So here we've got the highlights of the white just really making that pop on the outside and on here we still haven't done the wax and it's just sort of got the grey grey brownish layers in there so I really love the way that's turned out. Now this is the other side that I've already done over here with the wax so that's looking very similar. I've still got wax on my cloth here. So as each layer dries you just go on with the next layer. Totally really simple and easy project to do to create. Here's the original look if you've just joined us. That's the original cane basket look here. Flipping it We've added a chocolate layer here. That was our next layer. I don't think I've got any of the third layer. But then we added some beige, some brown. All of the instructions are in Jamie's gorgeous French vintage decor book, which I've popped a link for. And you can get that on Amazon right in the top of the comments there. Or in my comments, you can scroll through and have a look for the link. Absolutely gorgeous. And she's come up and hers has come up just beautifully from this little look here and I reckon mine's come up pretty good too so I'm really happy with that let me just see if I can get a shot there oh I'll have to find some gorgeous greenery or something to add in my vintage basket there but there's the look right there what a difference so I really hope you've enjoyed that live we just flip around and let you know about tomorrow. So tomorrow, I've, like I said, I'm going live every day this week. I'm yet to um, call or just find out if my local op shops will let me go op shopping with you. So some, I know some stores might not like you to video in the store, but every Wednesday, if you follow my Instagram stories, I actually take you op shopping, and which is thrift store if you're in America, 
Um, we go thrift store hunting and show you different items there that you can grab or look out for. Little hints for your home decor, um, for furniture painting tips, all that kind of thing. So if there's anything that you want to find in a, in a thrift store or in an op shop or you're not sure about, pop it in the comments below, ideas you might have or things you're looking out for and we'll see if we can find an op shop tomorrow that we can go live in, which will be scary. But uh, <laughs> I hope you'll join me there around about the same time. But watch my Facebook page. If you're not clicking the follow button, you can actually go to the top of uh, my page and, and hit follow. So that'll make sure that you see the notifications. So when I pop in a photo and say, hey, this is the time we'll be going live tomorrow, then you'll be able to see that. But also follow me on Instagram because I've got a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on in my stories there. Would love to see you there. So we've got lives every day this week, right up until Sunday. I have no idea what I'm going to do on Sunday, but hey, you know where I'm going to be? I'm actually going to be in Sydney. So it'll be different. And we will be talking to about some business tips. So the other thing, I'd love you to message me or leave a comment. If you have any questions business related, if you've got your own furniture painting business and you'd like to know some more tips and tricks about doing businessy things or social media and how to get more Instagram followers or Facebook, how to do Facebook lives when you freak out. Like, believe it or not, I do freak out every time I go live. And that's why I've set myself this challenge to go live every day this week. Um, well, actually, I didn't even set the challenge. I'd, I'm going to put a link to Joanne Condon from Ireland. She's got the most awesome, crazy accent. And she's going to be going live every day this week as well because she's the one who actually challenged me on Instagram to just do this and go for it. So thanks so much for watching. See you tomorrow and we'll be going op shopping. Bye.